There are CAPTCHAs where if you follow the CAPTCHA's instructions and you complete it, you will get hacked. So I'm going to show you where the scam pops up on Discord and across the internet. I'm going to show you how the CAPTCHA looks like and how it works. And finally, I'm going to tell you something important about Discord's own CAPTCHAs, because I already know people are going to get extremely paranoid and confused. So in terms of this fake CAPTCHA, on Discord it pops up in a variety of different ways. It's literally a little something for everyone. Because the first way it popped up that I saw was that some random account sent a viewer of mine, uh, Sophie Rain. Spider-Man video. Some of you guys are extremely down bad, but it links to this website, which unfortunately is down. But don't worry, I always have a backup website. Then this guy here had a TikTok follow bot by the same website with free followers and the Sophie Rain Spider-Man video. And then they sent another DM saying one day only until it runs out. The, uh, the, uh, my brain's short circuiting because I don't know if this is even a coherent sentence. One day only until it runs out. That's from Andrew Tate. You get $500, $500 sign in the wrong position when register, and then it leads to this website. But that's for Discord, because one of my viewers was, uh, he was downloading something and he got a random pop-up ad which led to this fake CAPTCHA, and he was trying to download a video game. He had no idea it turned out to be one of those raunchy adult games. But for Gooner76, the way that this scam CAPTCHA popped up is that he was trying to download something and it showed, okay, he knew exactly what he was doing. It showed this pop-up ad on a website asking if you're over 18 years old. But when he clicked on this ad, it led him to a website which had the malicious CAPTCHA. Now, unfortunately, everything I've shown you so far has either been, uh, it's just a non-working website, or the website itself is suspended. So there's no website for me to look at until Patrick, one of my viewers, actually came in and saved me. But they did a whole entire analysis of this, but I can't read. Instead, I just saw this screenshot that said, heaventools.lol. It worked! Discord member botter. Botting real members to your Discord server with just a few clicks. Complete the verification to begin. There will be an ad soon, but just, just for the YouTube employee. I'm not promoting this at all. But I do want to say anytime I go on some sort of sketchy Discord website, I already know that if I visit this website, the people behind it are going to try and figure out my IP and try to DDoS me because they have literally nothing better else in their life to do. And that's why whenever I go on any sketchy website, in fact, any single time I record, I'm using this video's partner NordVPN because just with the click of a button, I can hide my IP from these scammers and now they can't DDoS me off the internet. So suck it. And I specifically use NordVPN because it's fast. When I'm recording, the the last thing I want to do is stare at my monitor, be depressed, and wait for a page to take five minutes to load. Now, you might be not as stupid as I am, and you might not need to hide your IP from Discord scammers who are struggling with algebra, so why should you even use a VPN? Well, do you use Discord to transfer files between your devices? Cute photo. Or is Discord's pathetically small, relatable, upload limit bothering you? Well, you can use NordVPN's MeshNet feature to transfer files between your devices. And you can use the MeshNet feature to send files to anyone without any limits on file sizes. Now, if you've watched every single TV show that is available on your streaming platform of choice, you can use NordVPN to change your country and get a whole new catalog of localized TV shows to watch instead of socializing with people like a normal functioning human being. And if you use my link in the description, nordvpn.com slash no text to speech, you get an extra four months with the purchase of a two-year plan. Why did my wife divorce me? I don't know, but I know I can get this deal at nordvpn.com slash no text to speech. And not only that, you get a 30-day money-back guarantee at nordvpn.com vpn.com slash no text to speech. Thank you, NordVPN. Bye bye. I love you. Mwah. Damn, you can even see like how often I'm on my computer for the whole entire day working. That's kind of depressing. But anyways, on this website, there's a little something for everyone. There's a Fortnite spoofer. If I click on it and click download, it leads me to a CAPTCHA. If I go back and I click on Heaven Boost Tool and I click on download, leads me to a CAPTCHA. Uh, you see a trend here. Member botter, download, leads me to a CAPTCHA. And if you have beef on TikTok with someone, then you could use the TikTok Mass Reporter, which again, if you download it leads you to this CAPTCHA. This is the CAPTCHA that will hack my computer. Now the thing with CAPTCHAs is that they're getting a lot harder recently. There's ones where you have to like pick the two birds, calculate the integral, and now things get even harder because when you click I am a robot you need to complete these verification steps. It tells you to press the Windows key and R so you need to do finger gymnastics and when you do that you should have a run window pop up assuming you're on Windows and then what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to paste in some code and then press OK. I'm starting to get a little nervous having this in my run window because if I click on OK, my computer will be completely
completely hacked. A CAPTCHA shouldn't require you to go into your computer and run some random commands, and it seems like most people with some common sense would not fall for this, but to be honest, my friends would fall for this, and I've had a lot of people message me about the scam. It might seem stupid, but when people see this and it just says, I'm not a robot, their brain just doesn't turn on and say, hey, wait, hold on, this might be a scam. But another thing I want to point out is the fact that when I went on this website and I clicked on the CAPTCHA, it automatically put this in my clipboard. Google Chrome, if you go to like your permissions and stuff, where are we looking at? Site settings. Oh, this is way too much for me to read. But in the Chrome permissions, Chrome does have a permission to access your clipboard. But this permission is only used to read stuff from your clipboard. There's no Chrome permission to write stuff to your clipboard. And five years in the future, there might be a permission to actually stop this scam from happening. Where did the run window go? I don't want to accidentally press enter because here's the thing. It tells you to press enter on your keyboard. When you're on this window and you paste in something and you press enter, I'm just double checking. It's app data. It's not the scam. But when you press enter, it will automatically run the program. And for me, it just opens up the roaming folder. Just given how easy it is to do this thing, you press Windows and R, Control and V and press enter. People do fall for this. Now, considering I was absolutely terrified to have that code inside of my run window, uh, I'm going to continue on with the scam through a virtual machine so I don't hack my computer. I am now in the virtual machine, which is also why the quality of everything has dropped substantially. I'm going to click on the CAPTCHA. I am not a robot. I need to complete the verification steps. Now, if I press Windows R, it's going to open up my run window. Uh, so I need to go into here and just type in run. I, I said I need to go in here and type in run. I, hello? <laughs> All right, that was a little painful, but I managed to make it work. Paste in the verification. Now you'll see that it says check mark. I am not a robot. Recapture verification ID. It matches what the CAPTCHA says, but let's uh, press the left arrow key and let's just see uh, if there's anything before it. <laughs> and you'll see what it's going to do is it's going to run the command mshta heaven tools dot lol, which we'll get to a little bit later. But let's just click on OK. Let's run the scam. OK. Is anything going to happen? No. Let's run it again. <laughs> OK. It's opening up something. You see it says recapture verification, but I can't see it anywhere on my screen. Not responding. Always a good sign. Uh, so I did the capture verification and uh, it's not working. So it's actually exactly like a normal capture anyways. But in the background, it's doing something nasty to my virtual machine. So we'll get into the results of that triage analysis. But first, I need to explain how this capture system works, just so everything actually makes coherent sense. But when you actually click on I am not a robot and you run through this capture, it tells you to press control V. Now, if I go into the good old notepad, what this capture is doing is making me run the command MSHTA and it goes to this website, heaventools.lol recapture dash verify. And then there's a hashtag for a comment. This is just so that when you run it in your run window, all you see is just, I am not a robot. So removing that garbage from the back, we can see that the main thing that's happening is that we are running the command MSHTA heaventools.lol. Now, I don't know what MSHTA is. MSHTA.exe is a Windows native binary designed to execute Microsoft HTML application files. Running this command can execute Windows script code embedded within an HTML website. What does that mean for normal people like you and I that don't speak computer? It is going to run the code in heaventools.lol recapture verified. You will not believe what happens when I visit this website. Absolutely nothing. All right, opening up my Chrome console. And the main thing you'll see is that the, the head has, there's no head. I remember when the application was running and it was called recapture verification and it had that Google Chrome icon. This is what's setting that. But if we expand this open, script language, VBS script. And this is the code that's behind what's going on. Now, you see how this code has a whole bunch of blank spaces? Well, when uh, Patrick was going through this and doing his analysis, he uh, he said, holy chat GPT, because if you looked at the code before they changed everything, there was comments up the wazoo replaced with actual download URL. And then the comment just kept going and making the code not work. So when you visit the website, it is going to create a small little window that is one by one pixel, and it's going to move it to negative 32,000, negative 32,000, so that you can't see the window. Remember when I was running it in the virtual machine and I hovered over it, I just couldn't see what was happening. That's what this is doing. And blah, 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 doing stuff to make the thing work. It is going to go to the download URL, heaventools.lol slash recaptcha verification.exe. Keep in mind, recaptcha verification.exe. It'll be important for the analysis later on. And what it's going to do is it's going to run cmd slash c and it's going to run the command powershell.exe. Commands revoke web request URL. I, I got lost in the sauce there. Computer translation. It's going to download this file and it's going to run it. And well, if I go back to triage, things get even more spicy. Because here's the thing. When I was going through this triage analysis, I was trying to figure out what is this malware doing? I want to show you video proof that it's stealing your information or stealing your passwords. And the furthest I got through the triage analysis is that it ran a file called uh, windowsdefender.exe. And 
your roaming folder, which is not where it's supposed to be. So this is a fake Windows Defender. And all it did was just add this to your startup. Now, when I tried uh, finding this good old Windows Defender.exe file, I couldn't. Because it turns out if I go to the analysis of the virtual machine and I look at the files, every single time I tried looking at the file, it would just automatically delete itself. And if I had to guess, the reason why it's deleting itself is because it went through a whole bunch of other things to see if it was actually on a virtual machine. So it determined it was on a virtual machine and the malware stopped. And so did my heart. But again, that's where Patrick pulls up with the absolute clutch. Because Patrick went on any run and did his own analysis of the recapture verification.exe file. If we go to the bottom here, we can see all the files that have been modified during the virtual machine running through this malware. You can see they also got the same error that we did, but that doesn't mean anything. In fact, I'm pretty sure this is a fake error. Because if we go to the files and we scroll down to the very bottom, you can see C, users, admin, app data, local, DE, and then a whole bunch of numbers. There's letters in there too, apparently. Now, if you're someone who's, uh, who does a little bit of shady stuff, you might already recognize what this is, especially with the, the country format DE at the beginning. But this is a zip file, and if we open up the file, we can see what's inside of it, and it doesn't take a rocket surgeon to figure out what's on here. We can see passwords.txt, and you can see that if this was run on your computer, it would go through and get every single one of your passwords on a whole bunch of websites. We're talking your Discord account, your Facebook account, there goes all your Facebook dating, talking to those hot boomer moms. But any passwords that have been saved in your browser are now in this file for the scammers to take. Or just sell to people, that's usually what they do. They also figure out what your computer name is, they figure out your geolocation, your IP address, and for all the Discord e-gangsters, this is the worst thing that could happen to you, other than your mom kicking you out of your house because you refuse to get a job at 25. It also stores your bookmarks and your, your history, which might not be too good, and according to the people that make the malware themselves. <laughs> It gets access to all your crypto wallets and it gets access to some of your applications like Discord, Signal, Telegram, your Steam, your Epic Games, your OBS. Oh, if your Twitch or YouTube account is connected to your OBS. And it sends all that information to someone. And if it's your crypto wallet, that's not very good at all. That's like being robbed. And with this piece of malware, it will persist on your computer until the person that hacked into your computer decides to self-destruct or turn it off. So that means if you accidentally fell for this fake captcha, then you need to reset your computer completely. So fresh install a Windows and then reset all your passwords. That's usually just general good blanket advice if you get hacked. Now, we have one last thing to talk about. It's the fact that we need to talk about Discord's CAPTCHAs. Now, here's the thing. Once this video comes out, people are going to be really concerned about CAPTCHAs and really skeptical about them, and it might lead to something like this. One of my viewers sent a video suggestion talking about a new Discord scam or a firewall breach. When my viewer sent someone a friend request on Discord, they got this specific pop-up saying Windows Defender Firewall has blocked some features of this app. Now, now, this specific pop-up usually happens if you see a CAPTCHA. Because according to Amia, who is part of the Discord data mining community, they know way more about Discord than I do in terms of how it functions. But sometimes when you send a friend request, you will get a CAPTCHA. And Discord uses HCAPTCHA as their CAPTCHA provider, and HCAPTCHA is known to trigger this specific firewall pop-up. And when it shows that CAPTCHA, you might get this Windows Defender firewall pop-up as well, and your brain might be a little concerned. You might be like, is this the same CAPTCHA scam as the one shown in this video? And fortunately, it's not. It's just part of how Discord works. The easiest way you can tell if a CAPTCHA is trying to hack you is if it asks you to do anything in Windows, like pressing the Windows key and the R key, or if it tells you to add something to your bookmarks bar or tells you to go to a different website. At the end of the day, CAPTCHAs should be easy so that grandmas can do it. Any hoot hollering and a half gamers, that's all I got in terms of this CAPTCHA that can hack your computer. Anyways, bye bye. I love you. Mwah!